Not many people know that I'm in pain every second of every day. Not everyone knows that I've got anxiety and depression. I often feel living with this condition that people don't believe me. Here in Portsmouth, we are passionate about having an inclusive and diverse workforce, a workforce that represents the community that we serve. We know that by having an inclusive workforce, that we are able to provide better patient care and provide better patient outcomes and a safer environment. We're proud to be a disability confident employer and we're working towards achieving disability confident leader. We know that part of the NHS People Promise is that we have a compassionate and inclusive leadership and we're working very hard to achieve that. I have a diagnosis of a condition called ulcerative colitis which um, is a form of inflammatory bowel disease. I'll have to go to the toilet maybe up to 20 times a day if I'm having a flare of my disease. I think with this disease you often look really well um, and I'm a person who would try and put a smile on that so even if I felt terrible I would say I'm fine, everything's okay. My main disability is with chronic fatigue syndrome, otherwise known as ME or fibromyalgia. It is characterised by significant fatigue, a degree of immune suppression and some degree of chronic pain. I have mental health issues and I have chronic pain as well. It's either if it's like me moving about or it's that I'm not in the best of place mentally and I get a little bit upset. I have arthritis um, in multiple joints. Not a lot of people are aware that young people have arthritis. Um, I think more so now than when I was diagnosed. We know from the indicators within the Workforce Disability Equality Standard that we have made an improvement, but we equally recognise that there continues to be a disparity between our staff who have a disability and those staff who don't. What we also know is that only 9% of our staff here in Portsmouth have confirmed that they have a disability on our records. And it's really important that we understand why there is that reporting gap. And once we understand the staff who have disabilities, we're able to support them more within the workplace and provide all the adaptations or any adjustments that they require. I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes when I was 19 years of age at, at this hospital and I was a second year nursing student. And I only recently declared it but I think it's a good idea because um, then people can help you and they can help facilitate to make your life a little bit easier. I've got um, multiple sclerosis and it's very different for different people. But for me, it manifests itself as physical symptoms. So I have mobility impairment. It's about just putting it out there, being you know, courageous in some cases, just to, to admit that you have something that, that does impinge on your ability to do things, operate on a day-to-day -day basis. There's no... Uh, detriment to declaring a disability and many disabilities are hidden these days. When I was first looking at joining the Trust um, I mentioned in my interview that I have arthritis. They agreed the time out for things like rheumatology appointments um, wouldn't be owed back for example and other than that it was just making sure that my desk was appropriately set up for me. I'm allowed to get up and go for a wander and stretch my legs. My advice would be to declare it. I wouldn't say I'd always felt that way. I think it's definitely changed. But when I look back now, I wish I'd been more open sooner because it really helped me to see that it's not going to hinder what I want to do, that the impact I imagined is not the one that's true. Occupational health has been really good. They've helped me to say, like, if I need to go back to my GP for further review or if it's just like some general advice of like what I can do to help myself whilst at work. I worked for the Trust for 35 years and then I got my disability of being having Parkinson's. Occupational Health have been absolutely marvellous about it and they know exactly, um, they, they talk to me about my, my credibility of how much I know and things like that and how to keep myself safe. And if I do have a bad time, I do inform them. Since having this diagnosis, a 12-hour nursing shift was just too much. And I remember chatting with my manager there and she was very supportive, so I was able to tell her about my condition. We know the behaviours of all staff impact on how we feel in our workplace, but especially managers. So it's really important that we work with our managers to provide them with the skills, the knowledge, the awareness and the tools that they need to support staff with disabilities in their workplace. As my asthma dramatically worsened um, and, and my ability to, to continue my job in a high care area was compromised, 
the input that I've had and the flexibility that I've been shown is really, really, really helped. I've had conversations with my managers about uh, how best to support me and uh, it is about having that that kind of flexibility to operate in a way that works for me. Um, so whether that be where I work or when I work, um, that freedom gives me a means of kind of managing my condition and my ability to just get on with the job that I'm being paid to do. I think the Trust can help people with disability in general by asking them what their needs are because it's, disability is a very individual thing and how you deal with disability is also an individual thing. I'm really proud to be the executive sponsor of the Disability Staff Network. It provides a collective voice across the organisation and is one of the driving forces in supporting our staff with disabilities. It supported us in developing the Health Passport, which we've delivered across the organisation. And it's also been successful in a bid for funding to um, create an awareness programme which will help to drive down some of the disparity in the reporting that we have for those staff. It's to do with seeing that invisible disability, we try to hide it and people don't fully appreciate it. And sometimes I think we need to be open about that and have discussion about it rather than being embarrassed and trying to hide it and feel inadequate. If someone has declared that they have a visible or has a disability, I think it letting a manager know it's all right to ask the question. You know, for me, if I've declared it, I'm happy to be asked. And what would be most useful is that when I'm asked, that that person listens. Um, so listens to me and believes me. I often feel living with this condition that people don't believe me. Just having these outlets to be able to speak about it, to highlight where we can go to if we feel we can't chat about it in the environment we're in, to almost um, be free in saying that not everybody who works in an organisation is going to be 100% well, that we might have a health condition and it might affect how we can do our job. The solution is a very personal one. So no two people with the same condition may have the same accommodation requirements. As a medical profession, we have very high expectations of ourselves. But I think we need to realise that we're not invincible. And sometimes acknowledging the fact that we have weaknesses actually allows us to have compassion for those out there who have to put up with seeing their weakness every day. I'm hoping that attitudes to disability in our profession are going to change so that there is a more compassionate and um, caring approach to us as staff as well as to our patients because it'll help both. The hardest thing to do is to admit when you're in a competitive environment like an interview or recruitment campaign to say that I have a what's perceived as a weakness I guess and actually that's about honesty and integrity and saying Yes, I have some, um, something that I bring to the party that's you know, going to make it difficult for me to do certain things in a certain way. Um, but actually I've learned that about myself, it's that level of self-awareness. And then you convey what goes with that, which is, well, what I need to overcome that is X, Y and Z. Not everyone knows that I've got anxiety and depression. Not many people know that I'm in pain every second of every day. Making people aware so they're understanding Life isn't how it is today, it's how you want it to be tomorrow and the day after and the week after. I may have Parkinson's, but Parkinson's lives around my lifestyle. I don't live around Parkinson's lifestyle. I feel that the Trust are doing a good job in terms of um, highlighting awareness of people living with health conditions and also making me believe that it's possible that I can go on to develop and have the career I want to despite having this condition. We don't look at someone's disability, we look at their ability and we look at the skills and they look at what they bring as part of the team and that anyone can come and work for us and is valued as a team member and contributes to the care of our patients.